Hi, I'm Bonnie Kempke. Welcome to my studio and welcome to Quilting on the Thread. This is going to be a video a little bit off the norm. It's not going to be quilting. It's going to be how to install the Cutie Channel Locks. So before I get into that, I'm going to tell you what you will need that is not included in the kit. And that's a pair of needle nose pliers. Um, I'm hoping these are big enough. These are some jewelry pliers that I have. But what is in the kit is the cutie, let me put my glasses on. <laughs> what is in the kit is the cutie bottom channel lock, which I'll be using. The cutie top channel lock which I don't need to use because I don't have the flat plate I'm I have a cunique on my machine so I'll set that aside and then you need the top channel lock that has that big flat plate on it and that's for the cunique and then inside they have a um, M6 20 millimeter screw that goes with the that is used with the top channel lock that goes on the cunique and then it comes with two m6 16 millimeters and those are to be used with the cutie bottom channel lock and the cutie top channel lock so you should have three screws and three channel locks and a four millimeter allen wrench so all of those came in the kit as well as the instructions. So I'm going to um, modify my camera so that it's looking down on the work area that I'm working on and I'm going to try and stay out of the way of the camera while I do the you know while I follow the instructions on the channel lock installation. So I'll be right back. So here I am, I'm back, and I realize that you may not see everything I'm doing, but I'm going to tell you what we're going to wind up doing. We're going to take this back wheel off of the bottom carriage that the your um, cutie upper carriage or cunique rides on. So there's a bottom carriage that that's the one that rides horizontally. And then what rides vertically is either your machine or your upper carriage. In my case, it's the Cunique, and so I will wind up taking this back wheel off of the bottom and attaching the channel lock and putting the wheel back on, and I'll be taking the right rear wheel off of the Cunique and reattaching it with the channel lock that goes with that. So I'm gonna move the, cu the Cunique out of the way, and put some rubbers that are catching me. There we go. That, those elastics are quite fun. So you have this four millimeter channel, I mean an Allen wrench, and these locks may, I mean these lock nuts may very well be tight. So I've actually already loosened them up since I know that they could have been very tight. And so go to the the first page which is at, of instructions which is page two so it tells you that you're going to use the bottom cutie channel lock one of the 16 millimeter screws and the allen wrench so you find the sticker identifying the rear which actually says back on mine. It might say rear on some of the um, systems, but it says back on mine. So you stick that Allen wrench into the Allen nut that holds that back wheel in place. And um, so always remember it's righty tidy, lefty loosey. So I need to turn this to the left. And I want to go ahead and it says find the sticker, use a four millimeter, get the rear facing wheel and wheel spacer. So I need to take both of those off. And that should just come off with the Allen wrench and it certainly does. 
and see there's a tiny, tiny spacer. It's very small. I'm gonna hold it in my hand and get it up there so that you can see it. Well, maybe not. Anyway, it's really tiny. So I'm gonna set that to the side. And here's the wheel. Comes off of this nut that's already there. I'm gonna set that nut aside because I'm going to need the larger nut. Since the wheel is off, I'm gonna go ahead and clean that wheel. Just gonna polish that wheel a little bit. And I'm gonna set that right next to its nut. I mean, it's spacer. And then I'm gonna open the screws because I wanna show you the difference between the two screws. This is the screw that was already on the machine and this is the new screw. It's a little bit longer. Maybe I can get that in my hand so that you can see it. So the longer screw is the one that you'll be replacing the shorter screw with. So you set the shorter screw out of the way, keep the longer screw where you need it. So then, you open up the bag and pull out the cutie bottom channel lock. And this is what it looks like. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be attaching this. I'm trying to figure out how that actually attaches. So let me look at the diagram. So it attaches Ah, it attaches. Ha ha. Okay, that is lovely. It has a lip that will ride on the chassis. And so that gives you the proper angle. So you see there's that lip in there. That lip will ride on this upright of your back. Beautiful. So that's going to ride there. But what has to happen first is that the wheel and the spacer need to go in place. So you have to put your screw into the screw hole of the, um, cha of the channel lock. Then you have to put your wheel on. Now the wheel doesn't matter which direction it goes. And then you put the spacer. So you have all three of them on the assembly. Then you find that little ridge and get that onto that. Well, there you go. Hold all that in place and get your Allen wrench and you go righty tighty. So that ridge makes sure that you're winding up putting this in the appropriate upright position. So before I tighten that completely down, let's make sure. So yes. And so it looks rather space age to me. And I believe to lock it, you just pummel that in place. So that is pretty cool. So I think that's actually installed. See how easy that was. Now I want to make sure that my wheels still move on the track and they indeed do. So I can bypass page number three, which is to install it on the flat carriage. This would also, by the way, if you're using the G2 carriage, you would probably wind up using this as well which is the um, top channel lock, not the cutie top channel lock, because I believe that the G2 carriage has these same wheels as the, um, as the Cuniques. So if I'm wrong about that, somebody please correct me. So right now, my rubbers are pulling my machine around. So you know what? I'm going to grab one of my channel locks and just pop it. So I'm going to grab one of my aftermarket channel locks and just put it there so that the machine doesn't move on me. So 
on page four is the installation for the top channel lock. And again, you'll be using this time the 20 millimeter screw, the top channel lock, and that Allen wrench. So you take the right outside wheel, and that's this wheel right here, because I'm on the back. So I'm on the back of my machine, so I'm gonna take this wheel off. And in this instance, let me get that in there. So it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. So I twist to the left. And I wanna be very careful about that because I just don't know Ah, excellent. Now, on the on the Cunique, the spacer is built into the wheel. So you want to keep in mind that that lip is the spacer. But I'm going to get rid of this screw, and I'm going to replace it again with the taller screw. Let me open that up. <laughs> so I'm going to again compare the two screws so that you can see that the one I'm going to be replacing is longer than the one I'm taking out. Let me make sure that you can see that. Um, maybe you could see it better this way. So this is the old screw here on the on the right of my hand. So I'm gonna move that one aside. Oops, jostled you. So I have the taller screw. So I also need to open up my top channel lock. I probably should have opened these bags before I started. <laughs> Cause I'm awful with bags always have been. So how that wants to face is that, so this is the top channel lock, the upper channel lock. This is the one that goes on the Cunique or probably on the G2. So this will ride it looks like this will ride Yes, because that's the spacer that, okay, so I need to move that out of my way. This black spacer makes sure that you butt it up against the wheel system. So I take the screw and I put it into the outer portion of the channel lock. I put the wheel back on with the, um, with that built in washer facing up so that it's going to go into the hole. So I'm going to pull this whole assembly. You got to, got to hold it with your hands to get it in place. I want to get that into location with the black piece butting up against the front part portion of the shoulder where the wheels are hiding or are riding. So get my Allen wrench come in here and get a hold of so righty tidy lefty loosey so this is a little awkward to find that hole there we go I want to screw it to the right and honestly because this is heavy it's a little awkward I'm going to try and stay out of the way so that I can get you to see it there we go I believe I found it There we go. And this one's a little awkward, but just keep going righty tidy, righty tidy. Now I want to make sure that the wheel does not loosen and come off. So I'm going to take it and put it back in and give it one bit of a twist more. I'm going to do the same thing on this bottom one. One bit 
of a twist more, just to be sure that my wheels don't come off, but making sure that my wheels still ride on the system, and they do, and then to engage that. Oh, beautiful. Now then, the reason why you need the needle nose are in case you have to adjust anything. So the adjustment instructions are on page five. So turn the handle of the channel lock down completely. And this one is not engaging the track. So if it doesn't engage the track, there's a nut on the bottom of this channel lock and that's what you need the um, there's actually two nuts and that's what you need to twist down until it will inhibit the movement of your machine and so once that is inhibiting the movement of your machine then the upper nut you want to finger tighten up and then take your, your um, needle nose and just mess with that, you know, just tighten that up enough. And so now that is a solid stop. Lift up, it's not engaged. Lift down, it's engaged. I would think I want that a little bit tighter. So I'm actually going to engage that a little bit more, which means that I have to retighten that upper nut. Now, I don't know that you could see it, but it's, it's really apparent when you're looking at it. And for this one, there's no need. It's a firm engagement. So there they are, and they're installed. And the good thing about this is that I've heard from people that this now, this is sticking out another two inches, but if you take it down and just have it pointed down but not engaged, it doesn't interfere with your um, cutie frame. And I'm assuming that it might be the same with the Cunique frame. So if you are concerned that you're gonna hit your frame, because that is, at least two inches out. Just poke it down to where before it engages. See, it's, it's not engaged at this point. If I wanted to engage it, I have to push it all the way down. Now it's engaged and that machine is not moving. Oh, I'm so happy to have my channel locks. So I hope that this video helps you and you get to see, hmm, this is how an engineer attacks the job. Um, I read the instructions and I do what the instructions tell me to do. Now I'm going to check just to see if there's any other page. Um, nope. Um, five and six are the pages that tell you how to take care of the cutie channel locks because the cutie channel locks are different than the um, than the upper channel lock that you use on your G series frame or you, your Cunique. These do not have the nut system. The upper channel lock that would go on your Cunique or your G series frame does not have these two nut assemblies. And because I don't think you can see it very well on my um, assembly here, I'm just gonna bring this picture up so that you can see those two nuts. So one of the nuts is actually attached to the rubber cap and the other nut is the tightening nut on the assembly. So you loosen the lower nut, which is also gonna loosen the upper assembly nut. So you loosen the lower nut until the rubber catches the track. 
and then you tighten the upper knot. So I hope this helps you if you get a hold of the cutie channel locks and you want to install them. Um, take another look at my video, that might help you, and hope to see you again here on Quilting on a Thread. Bye-bye now.